God. Hello, welcome. So basically, um, I kind of just go with, uh, this is the way that I normally practice. So I lay down a yoga mat, I set a mood, usually with music. Um, so if you wanted to turn music on at your house, you certainly could do that, put it in the background. Whatever I feel like listening to, you know, I, I definitely don't only listen to yoga spa music. I have a lot of other options as well. So um, I won't do that here be, for a variety of reasons, streaming, speed, and all that jazz, uh, mostly that. But you can certainly put on some music. Um, and then I climb on my yoga mat and I make a decision. <laughs> like, like, where do I want to start? And then I just sort of let myself intuitively decide what to do. Um, I've done yoga long enough that there's lots of possibilities inside <laughs> my head, but I also get into patterns. Um, so like I have sort of spring patterns and summer patterns and fall patterns, and I'm starting to feel myself sort of gravitating to a more winter pattern, which most definitely is a little bit slower and a little more deliberate. Um, uh, so, <laughs> and sometimes more gentle. Um, so we'll see, it might um, gravitate in that direction. I'm feeling like starting in a butterfly shape and I'm trying to decide whether I want to start with a forward bending version. Yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna begin. So if for whatever reason you don't want to begin this way, you could certainly lie down and do a reclining butterfly. Um, I have done that with uh, you guys before. Uh, if you've watched other videos or been with me live in real life in the real world, you'll know. Um, but you know, I like them both. <laughs> so you can pick one. And what I've done here with this pillow is I'm just creating kind of a place for me to lean, basically. I'm using it almost like um, a little lentil, you know, like a stonehenge on the other side. And you can do it lots of different ways. Sometimes I do this with my elbows leaning on it. For some reason, I'm sort of, um, <laughs> maybe I need to hug. <laughs> maybe I need a hug and that's the reason. But I'm feeling kind of hugging this pillow is feeling really nice. So I'm going to carry on with this. I'm going to turn my head to the other side in a few moments. But we'll probably stay with this opening pose for about three minutes. And usually I, I do, when I do a yoga pose, I don't get in and just hold still or, you know, I usually kind of explore the pose a little bit. So I might lean a little to the left, lean a little to the right. I might adjust the legs. I might, um, you know, adjust my head position to kind of see what feels nice. And mostly it helps me stay present and explore the pose. So as I lean to my left really slow, there's this kind of spectrum of sensation that happens in my hips, right? So as my left hip grows heavier, my right hip grows lighter. There's a spectrum of sensation through my low back. Um, and so then if I meander back to the center, that all shifts back into a different place. And then meandering over to the right, you know, I can feel, and there's a difference in the resistance um, between the right hip and the left hip. And the right hip gives me a lot more resistance. Kind of push it, like the muscle pushes back against my inclination to lean it <laughs> to the right a bit. And so that, and then you can do like a little kind of more rhythmic wobble, and that's a different sensation option. And these are all the t tools that they, or strategies might be the better word that I um, apply to my practice to stay in it, you know, to keep my brain from wandering around. I'm gonna flip my head the other way. gonna do like about three more breaths with this pose.
And often if I come up out of a pose I've been in for a while, I like to fill up with breath while I'm doing that. And that just kind of gives the rib cage a little bit more structure, gives the spine a little more structure, but I still feel like I'm bending forward because I really let my back round for that pose. So I'm gonna take just a couple moments to sort of let that settle, feel the spine shift, feel my weight in my hips kind of shift to a neutral place before I move on. If I'm moving a little more quickly between poses, I don't need as much setup time or um, takedown time as it were um, for any of them, but for this one, All right, so I'm gonna to come to just kind of a basic cross-legged position here. And this is just a stable way for me to sit. So if you um, are, we're laying on your back, by the way, you can come to a seated position. And if it helps, you can sit up on a blanket or sit up on a pillow so that your hips are a little more elevated. I'm gonna drop my chin and kind of roll my head up and over one shoulder and then coming back, do the same thing going the other way, kind of up bend over the shoulder. And as I go along, I'm just noticing, like are there little, like there's a little place where the shoulder wants to lift up to help me. So as I go through there next time, I might pause a little longer or find the corresponding muscle on the other side looking for that tension maybe let it stick around a bit in the stretch and again so the movement is go back and forth but the the instruction if that's the right word is explore your neck <laughs> see what's going on in there tonight i've had some weird sleeping patterns really since the beginning of the pandemic but definitely in the last few days a little bit um less sleep even so that often lands in my neck. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more circle here. All right. So I'm letting my head kind of float up. I'm gonna mess with the shoulders now. And mostly I'm doing, I'm doing circles, right? It's kind of like a circular pattern. They're pushing together coming down, brick coming forward, pushing up. And the arm bones are along for the ride because they're attached. And then when I get to the back and they're kind of squished and pulled down, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. going to do the same thing with my torso that I just did with my neck. <laughs> so I'm going to fold forward and I'm going to roll myself up, then over one side and then roll back through the middle and up and over the other side. And again, sometimes I might find a little spot I want to pause in. this one more time. Okay, I'm going to come back to the center. All right, I think I'm going to start with some yin-y kind of hip openers. I'm feeling some yin. We'll keep it on the kind of um, less yin uh, side. Maybe do these for three minutes instead of the four or five that I would normally do this. Uh, let's see, I wanna begin with a square pose. So I'm gonna use a block, but essentially the square pose 
uh, is what you bring the legs into what is sometimes referred to as double pigeon as the two legs stack onto each other sort of like a pigeon pose but if you look down the thighs make a square now this works great for some anatomy and then for other people's anatomy it would be better to do the knees towards the center line so when you look down you have kind of more of a triangle and you'll do the one that's right for you that's called the shoelace in the yin world and gomakasan cow face pose um, <clears throat> in the uh, regular yin world, or <laughs> regular yoga pose, uh, Sanskrit pose name world. Um, <clears throat> so whatever you call it, <laughs> it's a very similar thing. When the thighs come towards the midline, um, the load uh, is in the outer hip, right? So the abductor muscles, the ones on the outside of the hip, uh, move the legs away from the midline. And so they are getting a little bit of tug, a little bit of pull, when we bring the legs toward the midline. <clears throat> so that's the area we're kind of targeting. So uh, if we go past where the hips are willing to go, usually the next joint down will get loaded. So the knee will start to feel uncomfortable. So if your knee feels uncomfortable, back off a little bit on the pose because the hip um, is going past its uh, appropriate amount of stretch point. And now it's pushing <laughs> you know, down the chain to try to get someone else to take part of the load. <clears throat> Somewhere else, as the case may be. in between my toes with my little little phalanges maybe on both sides of that uh, <laughs> a little bit of a stretch out so feels good to do that it releases some for me at least it releases some tension um, usually the way my, the metatarsal phalangeal joint work which is this little joint right there where your toes meet the big muscles in the center of the foot <clears throat> for me anyway is that the the littler toes, the little toe, the toe next to that, the middle toe, and sometimes creeps into the relationship between the second and third toe. But that the movement that I have there is very relatively limited. And the muscle tissue in that part of the foot feels sort of stiff and tight quite often. And so sticking my fingers in between or using those little yoga toe separators, they have shoes that are made to do that. You can also use the ones they give you when you get a pedicure. Um, so that separate your toes so you can paint your toenails more smoothly. But um, of all of those things kind of give a little bit of, just a little bit of traction, a little bit of movement um, to the um, joints and the, and the muscles around the joints that kind of hold on there. And it feels nice when it's over. <laughs> so we're gonna stay for like just shy of one more minute. Two more breaths. Now as I take my fingers out from between my toes and give the toes a little bit of a wiggle, it's really nice. And then coming back, oh, and letting that leg go. So I'm gonna leave this, um, my right leg kind of where it is. The left leg was the one that was on top. And I'm not going anywhere just yet. I'm just gonna rinse out that ankle, move the joints in my foot around as best I can. I have more um, access to the toes than I do to the middle bones of the center of my foot. But just by moving the toes, I can feel some of that space. Or, you know, the little muscle in between the feet, uh, those bones in the center of my foot move around. All right. It's nice. So now I'm gonna take this guy um, into a, kind of a version of the deer pose. Um, I'm gonna use two blocks and a pillow probably. So this right leg stayed right where it was and I've just swung my left leg around 
so that it is basically just, you know, just 90 degrees away and it's about a 90 degree angle. So it's like one little pinwheel, second little pinwheel. Um, <clears throat> I've only got two pinwheels. <laughs> We're not gonna make it happen over here on the fourth, <laughs> third and fourth ends. Um, and then I'm gonna lean forward. So it's a little bit like a, a pigeon pose and a little bit like a deer pose. So somewhere in between a pigeon and a deer. like a little bit more pressure on the external hip rotators on this side for me. And the more I sort of take it towards that leg, um, the more pressure there is. So if you're wanting to increase the amount of sensation, you can move towards the right in the case where your right leg is up front and vice versa. And again, we're, we're gonna stay for just about three minutes. One of the things I really like um, to do while I'm kind of hanging out with a yin pose, <laughs> besides this kind of actively relaxing, and for me there's almost always with the deer, the sense that I just want to relax through the hips, right? So I'm just going to let the hips get kind of melty towards the floor. So in addition to that, I like a nice, deep, smooth, rhythmic breath pattern. So not necessarily ujjayi, although you can do ujjayi breath, and ujjayi breath but the name is really great, first of all. It means victoriously uprising. And it's, I, I mean, based on that name, um, I, I speculate, <laughs> and my experience of it is, that it sort of helps you gather your courage, right? To face whatever's coming ahead, whether it's the flow that you're doing uh, in the case of a yoga practice or whatever. So to do ujjayi breath, you pull the breath through the vocal cords. So when I talk, my vocal cords um, cl get closer together so that the sound can get created. And this is something that we learn to do when we're very, very tiny, right? We learn to make these sounds and our vocal cords adapt to the sound. But essentially with the breath, I'm just gonna try to create a similar sort of restriction there at the vocal cord. And then as I inhale and exhale, and some people will feel it more on one half of the breath, there's a little vibration that happens in the throat. It feels kind of velvety in the throat. And then there's a corresponding sound, which um, if you make this with your nasal passages will sound more like Darth Vader. But if you actually make it there at the throat, it's a little more akin to the sound of like holding a seashell against your ear. It's not quite as loud. But because it's a technique and not a natural breathing practice, it can hone your attention. So we're gonna take two more breaths. You can try those if you like. And try to keep the muscles in the mouth relaxed while you do it. Okay, so then I'm gonna kind of lean over here to this right side, bring my left leg around, and I'm just gonna pause in the center, both legs straightened out and give a little movement. Now, when I've done some ujjayi breath, there's this really kind of interesting open spaciousness that happens that I feel around my throat. It's a really kind of interesting, pleasant uh, sensation. So I'm kind of a fan, but, uh, <laughs> but it's a breath technique that you really do have to pay attention to. So if you, the technique eludes you or just whatever, for whatever reason, it bothers you, um, or you can't quite grasp it, don't sweat it. Just do big, rhythmic, smooth, deep breaths and keep coming back to it. Um, this notion of kind of um, allowing the vocal cords to get kind of, you know, just a little ripple uh, with the breath. It's kind of fun. <laughs> now, I had my left leg on top last time, so that means my right leg is gonna go on top this time. I'm not quite ready. I'm gonna take about two more breaths here. It's kind of wiggling around but in a moment, I am gonna do it that way. 
And again, I'm coming back to the square shape where the legs are stacked more on top than a square one, but you could do the legs stacked on top um, in a more triangular shape. And I use a block to put my ankle joint on so that my bony little ankle doesn't hurt me. <laughs> and usually for me, like a little bit of a lean forward feels good, but it doesn't feel good necessarily to go all the way down to the floor, for example. Like that's a little too far. I can make myself do it, but it just feels way too um, intense at the hip. And so instead, just like getting like a I don't even know if it's a 45 degree angle, but no much, not much more than that for sure. Um, kind of leaning into it. But for some people, leaning backwards actually feels better. So don't be afraid to sit straight up or lean back rather than lean forward. I'm just working the breath and pausing here. I'm trying to let my mind quiet when I catch myself getting kind of busy in the mind. <laughs> just try to come back to the breath, awareness. It's what I love about Ujjayi, especially in particular, um, is you can do it while you're practicing. It's a nice technique while you're flowing. Um, it doesn't, you know, like some of the breath techniques where there's pauses or you hold the breath for periods of time are totally inappropriate for asana practice so it's a it's an appropriate breath to do while you're moving around doing poses um that and then the other thing i really love about it uh, is that i have to pay attention to do it so it does not allow me to wander off with my brain as much distracted by the little creatures in my environment. That's a totally different thing. I can breathe and get distracted by them at the same time. <laughs> Life is full of distractions, y'all. We just have to keep bringing ourselves back. So we're here, we're here for just a short while longer. About a minute. So this last one, I'm going to be the one that I kind of allow myself to float out on. Again, I'm going to leave this left leg where it is. I'm gonna give the right leg a little bit of movement before I swing it around into the deer shape. Right. And for me, one side is definitely different than the other side. <laughs> so 
and it just take a little bit of time. I might even need, I think this is where the pillow might come in handy. I need a little bit more time for my right hip to let go. So. Using the breathing, the presence, the kind of softening through all of the muscles around my hips. Those are, again, my little strategies for being present and really kind of getting the most out of this practice. in that last minute, this really kind of deep release of my right hip. So I'm coming out really slow. But you can come out um, at whatever pace is appropriate for you. I'm just going to move really kind of gently here. Now, what I am kind of feeling like doing after this <laughs> is some kind of lunge play. Um, I'm gonna do that with my knee on the ground. Um, so if the if you would like to do that as well, um, you could put you might want to put like something a little softer under your knee if the surface that you're working on is a little bit more um, hard. You know, if you've got a wood floor or something like that, a patio, whatever you got um, underneath your knee. So you could certainly put a folded blanket down or they make these really great little yoga props that are specifically for putting under the sore knees. So if you've got one of those handy, you can certainly do that. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of move back and forth a bunch, um, but you can also do the lunge pose and hold one side of it and then move to the other side of it. And instead of the in, the in between, right? You can just do one side, hold that for a few breaths, do the other side, hold that for a few breaths. Um, for whatever reason, sometimes moving back and forth for some people, it's really uncomfortable for the knee joint. So 
and kind of figuring that out for yourself and what's best for you. So I am just about there. I'm gonna take him out two more breaths, just kind of circling my ankle joints, and then I'm gonna come onto my hands and knees and try to decide how much padding I need. We'll find out. All right. So my way here. Just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Starting with some cat shapes. right here. It's hard to see when you're uh, on the mat if you're a tiny person. <laughs> okay, so I've gotten myself into a lunge. Apparently she wants to be on my mat. <laughs> Even at the risk of being smooshed. smooshed. Um, so I'm going to put blocks underneath my hands. Um, I might have to adjust my clothing here. <laughs> But essentially, I'm just leaning forward until my left front hip feels like that's enough. This is my right leg forward, my left leg's in the back. And then I'm gonna lean back into this, pick up my toes, kind of feel that out. And that's it, that's the trajectory. So I'm starting with one hand on either side of my front leg. The blocks help keep my torso kind of lined up with my thigh. You can have your torso higher or lower, just pick your version. Okay, so I'm gonna sort of meander just a little bit. So I'm gonna bring my torso so it's a little more on a diagonal here. And then as I ease forward with the hips and back, I'm not changing much more than that, but it does change the way I feel the shape, especially on this side. I'll do that twice more. Now, I'm gonna sit right here for just a moment and stretch out. I'm getting my glute, hamstring, a little bit of calf muscle here. And then I'm gonna just give this a little bit of movement first, and then I'm gonna sit all the way back um, with this leg a little more towards the um, like the half hero slash gate pose. So I'm trying not to set my own hair on fire <laughs> by being awfully close to the credenza. <laughs> I've just settled back. So my um, leg has to kind of point out to the side and rotate in. So I just kind of rotate my hip to follow it. And this is probably about as far as I'm gonna go. I might lean back a little bit further onto my elbow. But for now, that's feeling pretty good. So I'm going for a stretch right here. You can do this in a different ways. <laughs> for me, like the quadriceps and the hip flexors, um, quadriceps, you know, these two quadriceps on the front part of the thigh, I kind of come up toward the, um, Iliacus uh, psoas area um, are, you know, also hip flexors. They help the hips flex. So the thigh comes closer. So when I stretch the hip forward and kind of open that space up, I'm stretching out the hip flexors. And you can do those quads as well. <laughs> in particular, in this case. And for me, that's helpful because the, if the quads are fighting me, my hip flexors are like, I don't know, maybe we won't lengthen. <laughs> And even though this is intense for me, when I'm done with it, it often feels really good. Oh. All right, so to get out of this, I'm gonna just kind of shift my weight and take this leg out. It puts me back into a seated position, but before I go too far, I'm gonna just pause for a second. 
and jiggle everything. And then eventually I'm gonna wind up in that lunge shape again. It, it, I might move through some cat shapes again. <laughs> Follow along or do your thing. But this is the idea. So I have a yoga teacher, his name is Eric Schiffman, and Eric, uh, <laughs> one of the ways that he teaches uh, is there's always a segment, or at least when I've done workshops with him, most often there's a segment of the practice. So there's a meditation, and then there's a guided practice, and then there's a segment of the practice. He calls it freedom style yoga, but basically it's, um, we're going to put on music, I'm going to do what I want to do, you're going to do what you want to do, and we'll wind up back at the meditation together at the end. So technically we could do that this <laughs> in this space together. You could do whatever you want to do, I'm going to do what I want to do, and we'll meet up together at the end. <laughs> I mean, it could work. <laughs> or you can just follow along, because I'm eventually going to get myself t together and do everything. Oh, evenly on both sides anyway. Okay, so I'm going to bring that left leg forward, because so I had my right leg forward last time. So, now again, for me, the right hip is a different creature than the left hip. It has a lot more, there's a lot more muscle tension on my right. My right always feels like um, it's a coiled spring. <laughs> and I, uh, I liken it to, uh, it, it, like, I, if there were animals <laughs> representing each of my hips, my right hip would be like a moray eel, <laughs> super muscular, powerful, likes to hide in the shades, or, you know, in deep little crevices. And uh, <laughs> my left hip would be an octopus, clever, very mobile, <laughs> able to squish itself into a variety of shapes. Uh, <laughs> not as much resistance. <laughs> and so you can make up animals for your hips too, if you want. <laughs> For me, the hips are always sea creatures of some sort. <laughs> so I'm just moving forward and back here. I'm going to switch over on the next round to that diagonal shape. And I just move till it feels right. <laughs> There's a point where as I'm moving back and forth, where it just starts to feel liquid and easy. And that's usually kind of like, oh, that's the, that's the spot. I might do one or two more, but that's usually a good point to end. Okay. So I'm just moved my torso to this diagonal, which just shifts things a little bit for me. All right, so now I'm going to hang out with this little hamstring stretchy glute, some calf muscle in there too, on this left side. gently settle this back in and come back to my little kind of half hero slash gate pose. It's kind of reminiscent of the gate, although I'm treating it more like a hero uh, pose. This side of my mat doesn't have as many fire dangers. <laughs> so it's a little easier. Three more breaths. Looks like it's just on the verge of either getting softer or just telling me to get 
<laughs> that it's had enough of me. <laughs> I think we're on the verge of softer. Yeah, let me take one more breath here. I just kind of sense like this whole area. And again, like I had a similar experience with the deer pose where like, it's like they were waiting for something to happen and then suddenly, whoo, we got the right answer. It just all let go a little bit. I like that sensation. All right, so I'm coming out of here nice and slow. I'm giving everything a little bit of a rinse. Mm -hmm. So I am gonna eventually get myself to a standing position because I'm kind of feeling in that inclination in that direction. I'd like to do some warrior two um, and a little bit of movement and some wide angle forward bend and probably a tree pose. All of that is sounding yummy. <laughs> do you guys have that happen with yoga poses in the same way that like you might get like this idea, mm, I'd like to have mac and cheese or soup or, you know what I mean? Like you get in the mood for something, you get in the mood for certain yoga poses. <laughs> it does happen for me, just curious if I'm alone. <laughs> oh. So after a while, when you you know have been doing yoga for a long time, I feel like they yoga poses kind of become your friends, right? Like companions on your life path. <laughs> and so the downward dog has a flavor to it. The tree pose and all the others. My mat's a little slippery, so <laughs> I'm keeping my poses a little bit more short so that the weight stays on my hands and feet as it slide out from underneath me. Mm. All right. So, giving yourself like whatever time, if you need a little more time to get to a standing position, you can certainly take more time. And once you find it. I want to play with it a little bit. I like mountain pose. For a long time, I sort of thought of mountain pose as, I don't know, like, you know, the blank piece of paper, like before you create the art. <laughs> it's like, what happens first? Um, but now, especially for whatever reason, I mean, you know, I already liked it, but <laughs> the pandemic has definitely given me a kind of new appreciation of power of standing on my own two feet or feeling like I don't, I can't. <laughs> so using the pose as a kind of opportunity to send out intention to do so. Oh. It's kind of interesting, right? So it, instead of becoming a blank piece of paper, now there's all this um, color just with this pose all by itself. And so taking the mountain pose just for a couple more breaths, just feeling how the kind of inclination for my weight to shift back and forth and sort of finding that slight sway with my eyes closed, <laughs> there's a little bit of a sway. Uh, and then I'm just gonna take that straight into tree pose. And tree pose, you know, is one that will sway because it's a uh, hinge down on one leg. It's naturally kind of wobbly to do that. And can I be just as at home in the sway of the tree pose as I can be standing on the two feet in the mountain? And then kind of stepping back and coming back. Eventually I'm going to land that <laughs> warrior too, but it sort of felt fun to step back and forth a few times. Okay. Now one of the things that was not particularly clear to me when I first started doing warrior two, you know, like the, like the way that the poses were taught when I first started doing these standing poses. Now standing poses are not in every yoga system. So they're really in the sort of Krishnamacharya lineage. Ashtanga Vinyasa uh, system. They're not, they don't show up in a lot of other ones. Um, so when I was first taught this, I was really kind of taught to direct the hip to the side, direct the hip to the front for warrior one, when really it's not exactly that simple, right? So there's a relationship with this hip socket, which we've been exploring <laughs> with uh, 
the poses on the floor, relationship with this hip socket and the one hip socket might be different than the other. And I want this leg to stay sturdy because that's what makes the pose shape the pose shape. But whether my hips face the side or not, that's gonna depend on my bones. So don't worry too much about your hips facing a particular direction as much as you feel powerful in your legs and that as you move, the legs can hold themselves relatively steady as we kind of explore the shapes here between this kind of moon warrior, the warrior to the side angle. You could even throw in a little triangle to that. If you're inclined to do that, I like it. <laughs> Me. Often if I stay with those poses, the legs change shapes a little, but to just flow between them is kind of fun too. Oh. <laughs> it also provides some wobbliness. Oh. Which by itself is fun. Okay, so now I'm going to swing this around to a wide angle forward bend. And usually the wide angle forward bend is taught so that the toes, the feet are parallel to each other and maybe slightly turned in. And for a lot of people that's fine. But if you have, um, some people have twists in the, in the lower leg bones. So if there's any binding at the knee joint or even at the hip, the twist can be in the femur as well. Um, it would be better to turn the toes out a little and avoid the binding. Since if it feels pinchy, like your joint is pinching. Oh. And I like them turned out just a little bit anyway for this part where I sort of float back and forth and just bend one knee and then the other. I'm not really doing much with my torso. I'm just letting it follow along. And again, the reason that I often move into stillness <laughs> is to feel the pose, to feel myself present in my body for tonight, like what's happening, what's going on. I'm not worried about taking pictures of myself in yoga poses to post online because <laughs> I'm too busy playing with my yoga pose. <laughs> That's the notion, right? Because we're not, <laughs> we're not worried about the aesthetics, we're worried about the sensation. Oh. Now, whatever your pose looks like is what your pose looks like. Again, it's not about aesthetics. So feel it. If you want to come up higher, maybe coming up higher feels better in your pose. Maybe taking, <laughs> taking your head all the way through the legs feels better in your pose. We're all a little different, so we're going to experience it differently. Oh. I'm going to add some spine here. So. I've got enough space, like I've leaned forward a little bit, so it's almost like downward dog. There's a little bit of weight on my arms and still most of the weight on my legs. And then I'm just gonna round and swoop my back, and as I swoop the back, it helps to bend the knees, so I can kind of get a little more space there. And by swoop, I mean it's almost like a cobra. I'm kind of broadening my collarbones and lifting my breastbone. <laughs> I realized that I might have to translate candy speak to other speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to come around to the front again. Now, if you would like to throw in some vinyasa for your world, you could do that. You could finish that sun salutation, like step back into dog, do a plank, do an up dog, do a down dog, come back to the top of the mat. I'm not going to stop you in your sun salutations. Um, it's an intelligent way to move, right? <laughs> sun salutations feel fun and they're energizing. But again, for me, <laughs> I'm shifting into a winter pattern, and winter pattern to me is just a little more quiet. A lot, you know, there's movement happens within the poses. It's like being way down deep in the bottom of the pond. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I'm standing on my own two feet. There's a definite difference between the right side and the left side. The right side feels almost bigger, like there's, feels like the muscle mass has grown. It's not, it's just the sensation of, you know, the fascia that lives right under my skin is sending all this signal back to my brain. 
but gosh, it feels nice. So again, I'm gonna kind of take myself from this, you know, standing on two feet to standing on one foot in this tree again. And again, it might fall apart, it might wobble. I'm just gonna be present for whatever the tree does. I used to have a job where I led ropes courses and we would stand up in the trees, you know, 20 feet off the ground or whatever, maybe a little more in some instances, maybe less. <laughs> but um, trees move. They don't stand still. <laughs> Their branches are so big that the wind, even if there's not a lot of wind, the wind moves them. And so their connection to the earth holds them clearly. They're rooted in, but they have a really interesting relationship with um, the wind as well, and with movement and air. Oh. Okay. So having played back and forth a little bit, and I don't know, <laughs> I've got flowy layers on today. I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but hopefully I kind of tuck the layers a little bit. You'll be able to see what I'm up to or just flow, just do your thing. <laughs> you don't have to do what I'm doing. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna do this whole little kind of sequence one more time. And you'll hang out with the side angle a little bit. And with the triangle a little bit. Before I turn it into this wide angle again. Okay. So one of the things that I find really interesting to do with this pose is to really oh, sometimes stand really strong in the legs. And it's almost like you're trying to take the left butt cheek to the left and the right butt cheek to the right. <laughs> They're not gonna separate much. But just kind of standing in that broadness. And again, you may have to adjust the toes a little bit so they point in a direction that makes sense to your knee joints. Hips and or ankles. <laughs> And so there's no weight on my arms, but I'm kind of tenting myself up into a kind of downward dog, letting my shoulders relax because my legs are holding so steady. wander this around and back to downward dog for a bit. Again, you could kind of find your way through a, uh, you know, like a sun salutation kind of shape. Oh. Now, oh, I'm going to start with a little oh, wide knee jump pose. <laughs> a little wobble there. Eventually, I'm gonna wind up on my belly for some cobra, my fav one of my favorite poses. If you and cobra are not good friends, you can choose other options. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now, I might wind up back in that child's pose. <laughs> it felt pretty darn good. There was a time where child's pose felt really kind of abusive to me on my knees and the tops of my ankles. Um, <laughs> and it's funny, you know, it's called a resting pose quite often. <laughs> and if you don't have that kind of relationship to it where it feels restful, it's not a resting pose, right? Downward dog is sometimes called a resting pose, which I think is kind of crazy because it's a lot of action. But you could rest in almost any shape. This one. <laughs> laying on your belly, uh, for most people might be a resting pose and then for you might not be. So kind of stretching the legs out a little. And I've got my hands right here kind of close to my ear, top of my shoulder ear area. And then I'm just gonna lift with my back muscles. So I'm not even using my arms. And I'm just gonna kind of move my head through some different movements. 
and then come on down. So slide my hands back a little bit, doing some little shoulder circles, oh. lifting, doing some little neck movement. Coming on back down and sliding the hands back a little bit. And rolling the shoulders, rolling them, rolling them, rolling them. Oh. And then lifting. And again, kind of adjusting through the neck. Oh. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my shoulders in a position where I can kind of roll those back and forth a little bit. Sometimes I like to be up on the tips of my fingers, sometimes flatter in the palm, but in any case, kind of wide is helpful. And then, oh, I'm going to roll onto my side. Now, I, <laughs> I've uh, developed a love for the Vishnu's couch pose <laughs> during, the, <laughs> during the pandemic. So if you're up for it with me, we're going to grab hold of this big toe here. You can use a strap if you like. And then there's a tendency for me to want to sink back. So rather than do that, I'm going to use my core to stabilize myself, kind of reach through and maybe even lift my bottom leg a little bit as I kind of push on and stretch out my arm. So Vishnu is the Hindu god of the sustaining force, right? He's like the things, if there's turmoil in the world, eventually a, a peaceful force will come that sort of smooths everything out, and that's Vishnu. So there's lots of kind of, the Buddha is seen as an avatar of Vishnu. I've even heard people say they think Jesus Christ could be considered an avatar of Vishnu. Um, you know, clearly a different religious system, but still like the human being, right? The kind of peaceful, like teaching people to go inward kind of um, notion, right? Avatars of Vishnu. And he has this, he dreams a lot, Vishnu, which makes sense. Like, <laughs> if you're a sustaining force in the universe, maybe that you're dreaming the universe into reality. So come out of there, give everything a little rinse. Um, <laughs> but he has, he sleeps on this like bed or couch, it looks like a couch in the depictions of it that I have seen, um, made out of snakes. Or maybe it's one big snake with lots of little cobra heads. <laughs> And the cobra heads kind of lean over him and protect him from the weather. And then, you know, he's got like this writhing snake body that is what he's sleeping on. So <laughs> that's what this pose is named after. So uh, we've got a little shelter over our head. <laughs> we've got the kind of writhing or the wobbliness of trying to hold our core steady here. Um, and, you know, it's slightly sleepy looking. <laughs> And I, you know, I come to this pose, like it'll go away for like five or 10 years. I'll forget all about it. And then suddenly I'm like, Ooh, let's do that pose again. For, for whatever reason, <laughs> this pose along with the mountain pose have kind of been the poses of the pandemic for me. <laughs> I will examine that on a more deep uh, level, um, symbolically at some point. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Now I'm kind of winding myself towards the Shavasana, but I'm not quite there yet. So I'm going to hold this for about three more breaths. I would like to do a nice long spinal twist. If you want to substitute like a banana in there, you could certainly do that. And then I might do like a little inversion first and then Shavasana. That's kind of where I'm going. That's the path I see myself on. <laughs> so you can, if you want to follow me down this road, you can gather a few props that you might want for that. So. Like I'm gonna have a blanket nearby and I'm gonna use this pillow to elevate my hips and oh, for a little bit of space to rest my knees. Oh, so kind of moving back and forth here a little. Oh, oh. All right, so I'm taking this into a twist, but what I'm trying to do is just see like which side of the twist do I want to do first? And usually I find myself wanting to go to the right because that stretches the left side out, which is this nicer, you know, softer, a <laughs> little more accommodating side. But tonight, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the left first, so I stretch out my more recalcitrant <laughs> 
slightly more resistant side. I'm gonna woo my right side with this pose first. <laughs> Try to get it on board <laughs> uh, with my <laughs> the rest of my body. So I've got a pillow, I've kind of leaned my legs against. I've wrapped one leg over the other because I like the way that feels the best. And then I've got myself to, at a point where I, re I feel the stretch in my right chest muscle and down the right arm, like just at the point where I feel it. I don't want to go so strong here that it starts to feel like I'm going to tear. Um, that is never a, an appropriate uh, place in any yoga pose. If it feels like it's going to tear, it, it probably is. <laughs> it probably is tearing, already has torn. You're probably beyond the point where you should be, um, you know, come back. <laughs> <laughs> come back away from the dark side but um in any case uh but right to the place where it's like oh I, f I feel that that's pretty interesting that's the spot I go so now it's getting softer so what I could do is lean a little further in right so you give yourself like a a path to take if you jam yourself up against the wall you don't have anywhere to go so you gotta jam your poses up against the wall let them have pathway <laughs> Feeling like maybe three more breaths, four more breaths. Mm. And again, there's this kind of really interesting, subtle sensation that just tells me it's like, hmm, yep, it's time to move to the other side, or just that I have gotten out all of the spaces out of you know this pose I've gotten this pose to a point um, and there's it's all like the sensation the way I describe it usually is like you know when you ease the seat back in the car you kind of let it just there's this kind of feeling of like oh okay I can let go now <laughs> or I have let go right there's just a kind of ease that comes up um, and so I'm using those words but you can articulate it however you think is best now, because I was stretching this shoulder and this chest, I'm just giving that a little shimmy before I go too much farther. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm not quite ready to do the other side, but I'm close. And for me, again, there's this, a sense that my back is a little more even. I don't feel like I'm still twisting in the other direction. So now I've got permission to do, oh, if I needed permission, I've got permission to do the other side. Okay. So, this is usually my much more forgiving, easier going side anyway. <laughs> uh, saved, the, saved the easy side for last. So you just kind of find your way into a twist or you maybe you're doing the banana instead. They're both great. They both open up the side of the body in a really cool way. I'm gonna come on back to the center and then oh, I'm gonna kind of feel like instead of I'm, I'm just gonna put my legs in the air that's gonna be my inversion for now you could put something underneath your hips I'm just gonna do this little oh, kind of legs up give everything a little jiggle oh, and I'm probably gonna hang out for a minute or so just like that 
just Now, if you wanted to do like a legs over the wall or a legs over the couch or something like that, some similar version um, for your final relaxation, you could certainly do that. Um, if that does not sound, ooh, let's go in between the candle and the plant. <laughs> that does not sound like something that's appropriate or that you need to do or want to do, um, you can do Shavasana, uh, laying on your back or on your belly or on your side, whatever you think is gonna be the right answer. Now, it's a little bit chilly. It's gotten a little chillier um, tonight, so I'm gonna cover up with my blanket. Sometimes I use it like a pillow, and sometimes it's a nice little paw on. So, <laughs> so oh, I'm just gonna stretch out with as much as I can, a little bit of covering here. Now, Shavasana is one of those poses that's not particularly exciting to watch, so. <laughs> not about the video part of it as much as just that we're doing it together but what's important is that we're allowing our nervous system to completely uh, the body to completely relax so that there's not as much data being sent to the nervous system so the nervous system can really shift into that parasympathetic rest and digest state most of the time with yoga it's kind of you know in or near that state but any kind of tugging or pulling or um, tweaking that we do to our physical body. There's like a tiny bit of vigilance, um, making sure we don't hurt ourselves, <laughs> that our nervous system does while we're moving about. So this is the pose that really lets everything shift. Um, and it's a great pose to do, um, you know, at night, like we're, you know, if you're watching this with me live, then we're here at night and it's a great pose right before we kind of want to ease our way into bed at some point in the near future. But if you've also, you know, in times when you might be stressed out, you're not getting as much sleep, it's a good pose to let yourself indulge in for a little while. You could even set a timer for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So if you fall asleep, it'll wake you up. Um, and just let yourself have a few moments of Shavasana. <laughs> Child's pose works too. <laughs> if you're, that's a pose that's friendly for you. There's just some possibility to just let yourself go. So double check that the muscles along the scalp and around your eyes are all relaxed and soft. And the little space right between your eyebrows is wide. <laughs> and let the lips get really soft and fluffy. And let the jaw relax so the teeth come apart just a bit. And it might take just like a little bit of a snuggle of the shoulder blades to get them just right so that the whole upper back, chest, arms can all relax. Let the heart and the lungs kind of sink backwards into the back body. So the lungs, the left lung is almost like a little heart pillow and then your shoulder blades are back there kind of making a little nest for your heart to land in with your ribs. Put your little bruised and battered heart down <laughs> in that little pillowy nest. And let your stomach relax because maybe it's been doing some extra flips. <laughs> and let your intestines relax. And then all the little internal organs that support digestion and the various processes of the body. Feel the bowl of your pelvis just rest heavy on the floor. The spine is allowed to just take its little undulating pattern. And the sacrum, the back, like just between the two wings of the pelvis, part of the spine is able to broaden out and support all the little internal organs that live in the pelvis. Let the legs grow heavy and the soles of the feet soften. Let the toes and the fingers kind of gently fall away from one another. And 
feel your whole body taking on this soft, almost pillow or cloud-like quality. going to go anywhere, but we can just feel the breath as the body gently responds to the inhale with increasing space and responds to the exhale by simply letting go. how even though that ripple is just being created by the diaphragm in the center of the torso, the nearly all watery quality of the body responds all the way down to the tips of the fingers and the tips of the toes. Take a nice deep breath all the way down, as deep as you can. Let it go with a sigh. <sighs> and then as you're ready, you can start to wiggle and stretch and move around. Ooh. to give myself a little rock, a little back massage, a little hug. <laughs> Sometimes I need a hug. Oh. And hugs are in short supply these days. So, mm, gotta give them to yourself, yogis. So thanks for coming out and joining me for a little, mm, I don't know, <laughs> whatever that was we just did. <laughs> Take a nice big breath. And a big deep sigh. <sighs> Namaste, beautiful souls. <laughs>